Welcome. Today we are focusing on life skills from grade R to grade 3. In this segment, we are exploring grade R Bs and we will be making a game. Where is my B and what is it doing? Hello everybody. Welcome to today's episode where we will be exploring the importance of exercise. Today, we'll be making our very own busy bee to help us with some exercise movements. This is what you'll need to complete the activity. Two paper plates, an A4 white and black piece of paper, two googly eyes, an ice cream stick, a pipe cleaner, a pair of scissors, a marker, some Prit glue and some Bostick glue. All right, let's begin crafting. So what you want to do first is you want to cut the paper plate. And what we'll use is we'll use the design, the shape that's already there to help us with our circle. It's easiest when you fold it over and you press down and you take your piece of paper and you cut around. So I'm just going to show you with one this is me cutting around it. And then you've just got the frame that's left now. Hey, we'll put that aside. So this is what our circle looks like. And what you want to do is you want to cut two of those. So I would cut this one out. But because I want to make two different sizes, I'm going to make sure that when I cut it out the second time, I'm going to cut a little more of my circle. What do I mean? Just like this. Can you see that now I've got the bigger circle and I've got the slightly smaller circle so that I can have my body and my head. So the next thing I do is I'm going to start gluing. So I use my prit, I put a little bit on the head just so I can attach my body to it. Move that aside. And there we are. Next thing I want to do is I want to take my a4 black paper and I want to cut strips because the strips are going to make my lines on the B. My B has stripes, doesn't it? So you can cut one and you can cut it a little bit smaller and stick it down. I've got some that I've prepped already so I'm going to stick those down because they fit my circles. So here I go, I stick one down, there's my first stripe and then I stick my next strap. Right here. Then I, my poor bee needs some eyes, doesn't it? So I go eye number one and it's down and then I take eye number two and I stick that down. Give my bee a cute little smile and then it's time for the sting. I go back to my A4 piece of paper and I cut out a triangle. I'm looking for a triangle that's about that size. And once you've cut it out, it would look like this. And that becomes my sting. So I turn my beautiful bee over. I put some glue at the back. And I put down my sting. There we go. On my white piece of paper, what I want to do is I want to draw some wings. So you can fold it over in half, like so. And then you can draw your wings. And because both pieces of paper are together, when I cut around it, I'll have both wings at the same time. And here are my wings. Then I've put some glue at the back to stick down wing number one and stick down wing number two. Then what I want to do is I want to take my pipe cleaner. And with my pipe cleaner, I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to put some glue here at the back so that my bee has some antenna. Here we go, busy bee, number one and number two. Oh, look at my bee. And then the last thing I'll do is I'm going to take some Bostick glue and I'm going to put it on my ice cream stick. There we are. And then I'm going to put it at the back, just like this. So I'm gonna put this one aside so that we don't break it as it's trying to set. And I'm going to take the glue and close it. And here's the busy bee that we had before. 
now my busy bee wants to do some moves. You can play this with a friend. So what you want to do is show the friend the moves you have to do using the bee. So the first thing my bee wants to do, oh, look at it go. It's going, touching the edge and going, touching the edge. That means I've got to do the same. So I run, I run, touch the end of the table, run, touch the other end and I'm back. Now what does my bee want to do? It wants to jump. I think it wants to go wide that side and back in the middle and wide on the other side and back in the middle. I wonder if I can do it. Here we go. One, jump and I'm back in the middle and I jump again to the side and I'm back in the middle. Oh, this is a balancing game. And then the last thing my bee wants to do. Oh no, I'm not doing a handstand. All right, that's where we'll leave it today. Eating healthy and keeping fit is so important. How do you stay in shape? Thank you for crafting with me today. See you next time. Wow, what a useful idea to use for life skills. After the break, we will explore a grade one idea. Welcome back. In this segment, we're exploring grade one life skills, physical education, foot eye coordination, and we'll be making a skittle game. Let's have fun. Hi, Sunny Bonani, Dumelang. My name is Sheila Werner. The item I'm going to make here is a bread bag ball. I'll be using five bread bags, some citrus netting, and a pair of scissors. Let's begin. I take the first packet, first bread bag, and crumple it up into a ball in my hand. I put it into the, other bread, the next bread bag and I twist. One, two, three, more or less. Put my hand in the open end, pull the ball through, and do the same again. One, two, three. Put my hand in the open end, pull it through. And again. And again. You can do many things with these balls, including eye activities that build eye-hand co coordination. Here I'm using the third bread bag. By combining them with bottles as skittles, you can put up targets for children to kick it to. If you want to make a larger ball, you could use 10 bread bags because that will make a soccer ball. You can give them empty bottles to hit the balls with, and they can play a rough game of hockey. You can give them flat targets to throw it on the floor. Here's the fourth bread bag. You can also give them the cut-off tops of various sizes of bottles to play toss and catch, where they toss the ball up in the air and then they catch it in the top of the bottle in their hand. This is the end of the fourth bread bag and here is the last bread bag. As you can see, it's about the size of a tennis ball. Twist, hand in, pull it through. Twist, hand in, pull it through. Twist. And right now you just make a knot at the end. Fold it round, put it in the citrus bag. I've got two loose ends of the citrus bag. I'm going to tie them together, pull them right down, make sure I've caught all of it in. Tie a tight close knot if I can, and then use the scissors just to snip it off. And there is a little 
low-cost ball, no-cost ball really, that you can use for a number of games. I've got examples here of an assortment of bottles that could be used as targets or as skittles where you try to hit down as many as possible. In order to weight the bottles, you can put in a little bit of sand or water. And you can adjust the weight so that it's more challenging or less challenging for the children. I'm just going to put a little water in each bottle to hold it steady. But you could fill it up if you want children to practice throwing or kicking really hard at the bottoms. Last one. Screw the tops back on. You could also use sand instead of water, but water, if it spills, doesn't make so much of a mess if you're using this inside, which you could do. And it also is good for the garden if you pour it out on the grass afterwards. So there's a little set of skittles that I can use with my ball. And if you get the children to make their own balls, which they could very easily do, each one can have a ball in the class and they can use it for all sorts of games, whatever they enjoy most. Thank you. I hope this will be useful to you. Now that grade one resource really helps to build life skills knowledge. After the break, we will explore an idea for grade two. See you soon. Welcome back. In this segment, we are exploring grade two life skills, physical education, perceptual motor locomotive, and we'll be making plastic feet and hands to play. Walk, hop, Tiptoe and stride. Let's create. Hi, Sunny Bonani, Dumelang. I'm Sheila Werner. I'm making a set of plastic feet and hands to use to lay in locomotive trails for grade twos for physical education. I'm using a polystyrene tray to make a template. I'm using light plastic file, file divisions, a craft knife, scissors, a marker, and a peg to help me hold folded plastic. Let's begin. The first thing I need is a template of a hand and a foot. I'm going to use my own hand, but normally I would use a child's hand and a child's foot so it fits better. I'm going to draw around the outline of my hand, but not separating the fingers. And then I would do the same on this side for the foot. Then I need to cut out my template. So with my craft knife, I'm going to slice out the rectangular bottom, because it's easier to cut neatly if you don't have scissors if you have scissors and you don't have rough edges. So there's one. And I've got another. Cut out all four sides. And there I have it. Then I've got a hand and a foot. I can just demarcate the toenails and the fingernails. And then I can cut this out with a pair of scissors. It's quick and easy. And this gives a stiff surface that makes a very good template. If you cut one foot and one hand and the material is reversible, then all you need is a double pair of feet and hands to have a left and a right. Here is my plastic, my file dividers. 
I'm going to trim off the edges because I don't need the parts with the holes. Just using my scissors to cut up the side. To cut up the other side just to get off the little extra bits. And now I'm going to fold it into four because that way I'll get a pair of hands and a pair of feet. Use the peg just to hold it steady. Use my template to cut hands. And then I'll do the same with the feet. Over here I have a set of pre-cut hands and feet. And how one would use this is to lay a locomotive trail. So here, is, here are two feet next to each other. That is where the trail starts. You stand. Then perhaps you want the children to hop. So you put the same foot down twice. Then perhaps you would like the children to stand on to stand on their hands and feet. So you can put down a set of feet and a set of hands, like that. With these hands and feet, you can make a large number of different trails, including jumping, where you've got two sets of feet, walking close together, like that, doing big strides where the feet are far apart. You can include hands, you can include hopping, you can include jumping like a rabbit where you have two feet together and two hands together, and you can make an enormous number of different locomotive trails for movement rings. I hope you've enjoyed this activity and I hope it proves use useful to you. Wow! That great two life skill product will be useful. After the break, we will explore an idea for grade three. Welcome back. In this segment, we're exploring grade three life skills, physical education, hand-eye coordination, and we will make our own ball and racket. Let's be creative. Hello everyone and how are you today? My name is Lizzie Wei and we are going to be talking about all things fitness and exercise. Why do we need to exercise you ask? We need to exercise so that we can control our weight raise our levels of vitamin D by playing outside in the sun, as well as keep our bones stronger. Exercise also help reduce the risk of illness, such as cancer, as well as some form of diabetes. So for today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own racket and a ball to help you exercise. First, we need a coat hanger, a pair of scissors and a pair of old stockings that you need to cut up. You also need some tissue paper or any paper from magazines that you can scrunch up to make your ball. For the coat hanger, you are going to first stretch your coat hanger a bit like this and push it through your stocking. You need to pull and push and make it into a circular or an oval shape. Once you are done, you can then tie the end with the extra stocking that you have right here. 
And this is how your kotenga is going to look like at the end. This is how your tennis racket is going to look like at the end. So once you are done, you can then make your own tennis ball using some tissue paper. You need to squash up your tissue paper or some newspapers. Whatever paper that you have at home is absolutely fine. Push it through your stocking like this and twist. Turn it over, push it through and twist. Turn it over, push it through and twist. Turn it over all the way to the end. Once you are done, you then need to tie your stocking like this. Now your ball is complete. You can then go ahead and play with your tennis racket and a ball. Well, we have come to the end of the lesson. But before we go, I want to tell you a little joke. What did the tennis ball say when it was the middle of the court to the crowd that was cheering? It said, stop that racket. Get it? Racket, racket. Thank you for listening. I hope you've had as much fun as I have making your racket and your ball. Now, go ahead and have some fun getting fit and playing outside. Bye. Wow, that great three life skill artifact was really useful. Remember to make your learning fun and engaging for all your learners. See you next time.